Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Exploring Joomla 3x. In this uh, episode we're going to talk a little bit about the Joomla execution cycle. Uh, in other words, how does uh, Joomla take the URL and display what it needs to display. So if we have our web browser open and we type joom.dev and hit enter, how does Joomla know to bring up this home page? So that's what we're going to explore. So what I've done is uh, I've opened up NetBeans and I've brought up the index.php file. <clears throat> in the front end, if you type in joom.dev, um, the web server uh, it reaches out to the web server and the web server says, well, okay, well, you haven't specified a file. What file do I give you? And uh, a web server can be configured to um, give uh, any number of files, uh, index.html, index.php, index. Uh, ASP and uh, default.htm and, and uh, etc. So by default um, <clears throat> on our uh, install of LAMP Apache uh, will look for index.html and if it doesn't find that we'll look for index.php. So when we give uh, the URL to go to the uh, front end of the website joom.dev uh, not seeing uh, a file there it will automatically load up and, and, and run index.php. And if you recall, index.php on the front end is the site application. So let's see what's going on here. So I have index.php opened up here. And the first thing that we see is a define statement. Define here says that, hey, uh, the Joomla minimum PHP version is 5.3.10. So that's uh, setting this up for this version compare state uh, function down here it basically says hey does the version that the server running uh, how does it compare to this version that we're specifying and we're saying that if in this case if the PHP version is less than what we're saying is required 5.3.10 then this becomes true and if this becomes true we get an error message the script dies and says hey you need at least to use version 5.3.10 or higher to run this version of Joomla. So if your server meets the requirements, we get on past that. And then we see two variables here, one set to micro time. This is uh, the current time uh, uh, with microseconds. And we get the start memory usage, uh, how much uh, memory is being used by the script. Now these two variables are set in case you have def uh, the debug turned on. It uses those in the profiler. And we'll get to that here in just a minute. So the next thing we define a constant called underscore j exec. This constant is very important. Uh, all the um, PHP scripts that we're going to write for Joomla will have a line up at the top that says if define j exec or die. And what that does is it makes sure that our web page uh, or our, our component, um, if it's accessed outside of Joomla, will fail because this is defined inside of Joomla. Uh, and when we reach our web page, as long as it's defined, it will continue to run. So it's just a safety mechanism. So the next thing that we have here is uh, if file exists, uh, underscore, underscore, dir, underscore, underscore, defines PHP, then include that file. Joomla uh, will allow you to override the defaults um, of the system if you want to, like if you want to move the libraries around or if you want to just move files around to make it a little bit... Uh, uh, harder to, to locate because you know we you know if everybody knows the default layout and they can try to get into files this allows you just to rearrange them if you want if the um, file doesn't exist it uh, it doesn't include this and then it looks to see if a j defines has been defined and if it has you would have done it up here in your custom defines PHP so that this wouldn't run so we set the jpath base to the current directory which in this case is our web root and then it goes to the includes defines php file and loads that uh, to set up some um, default paths so we'll take a look at that so we're going to go to includes and we'll open up defines php and we'll see that uh, there's that line define jexec or die so this way we know that we came through joomla's index.php file so it explodes the um, uh, um, the 
base directory, which we set over in the index by the directory separa uh, separator, then actually builds it back together and then sets all these uh, uh, constants um, where they're located. So JPath administrator will be in the JPath root, which is the current directory with administrator on the end of it. And so that's really basically all this is. It just sets some paths so that Joomla can find um, uh, things like the libraries or or templates or whatever based on this constant. So we'll close that file. So once the uh, defines are, are uh, picked up, um, Joomla loads the framework.php in the um, in the includes folder and basically we just set some error handling and we make sure that magic quotes are off and we import uh, some libraries um, with uh, import.legacy and we're not going to go through all that but save it to say that um, um, the, uh, th this is the bootstrap code that gets uh, Joomla going. Okay, We set a version and then it looks for the configuration file in the current directory. And if that configuration file um, doesn't exist, um, it will go and look for the installation folder. And if the installation doesn't exist and the configuration doesn't exist, it bails out telling us that uh, there's, no, um, there's no configuration file and no installation um, code that's available. And then it, uh, the out, it starts an output buffer, it grabs the configuration files, and uh, turns you know determines uh, how much. Uh, uh, well, let me let me back up. It loads a configuration file right, and then creates a new jconfig object. And then so as it looks in the um, uh, configuration to see what uh, amount of of uh, error checking or error reporting that we have turned on, sets an ini. Um, option for PHP. That's the uh, same thing as going into your uh, INI file and, and setting it, but it sets it for the duration of the script. And then finally decides if uh, debug is turned on, um, and then if, if debug is turned on, it gets an instance of the profiler. And then we come back to index. So um, once the framework loads up, like I said, which is the um, uh, gets all the libraries and classes that it needs to start the application. If debug's turned on, it will take and mark the start uh, time, the start memory, as as the afterload. So the afterload is after we've loaded up the bootstrap stuff. Otherwise, it returns null. So we're not in normal production. Jbug or debug is turned off. So now we get to um, the main portion of it. So here we see a uh, Joomla creates a site application with a call to jfactory get application site okay and it is assigned to the app variable now jfactory looks to see if an application has already been created and if it's not it will instantiate a new application using the uh, j application cms get instance okay it's a static method call um, this application object is uh, stored in jfactory in the event that it's needed again in a later script. Uh, it's a singleton pattern that prevents multiple application objects from being created. So uh, we only need one application uh, for, for the duration and uh, so that's, that's what it does. So uh, we've assigned that to this variable app. Okay, And uh, then we move on to execute. Now this is kind of where everything uh, happens in in uh, uh, Joomla, so uh, without getting into a bunch of the uh, of the weeds of what goes on here, the remember we have a J application site object that's assigned to app, and we're calling the execute method off of that. So there's a lot of things that happen, but f basically uh, a number of methods are going to be called. Okay, the uh, well we'll just follow it. So we have a j uh, we have a j application site uh, object so let's find this so edit and let's uh, find in project we're looking for j application site and hopefully this won't take very long 
Okay, so there's the J application site class. Let's open that fold or let's open that file. So here we're saying run the execute method off of that. So while in the J um, application site object, we look at the uh, we see that there is no execute method. So it comes back to its parent J application CMS. So if we open navigate and go to that declaration. go to declaration there we go okay and we look in here we see that it has an execute and the execute method here says this do execute well this is a J application site so this is this is kinda of where we're it, it builds the, the application so let's um look at do execute then and site and we see the first thing is this initialize app so the without like I said without getting into the weeds when we initialize the application, it will uh, it will get the user, okay, that's uh, currently logged in or or the guest. Uh, then it loads the language strings uh, for translation, you know, depending on what language is set up um, in your install of Joomla, and the user's preferred language, okay. It sets a configuration API, and, uh, and then if the user has an editor, a preferred editor or set, it grabs the editor for the user, okay. At that point, um, it runs uh, route. Um, now, when the route, uh, when the application's route method is called, um, it gets a copy of the JURI object. Okay, the URI is broken down into individual components. Okay, the URI, the scheme, the host, port, user, password, path, all those sort of things that are uh, that the URI uh, consists of. It breaks it down into its constituent uh, uh, components and stores those as a JURI object. Okay. And then, after it gets that, it uh, it parses the URI, okay. And when it parses the URI, you know it's it's getting the query variables like the option, item ID, the view, things like that. And one thing you should note that if no um, component was passed on the URL, Joomla, when it parses it, will look to see what um, component is attached to the home link or the main you know, you know main link of the page and then assign that so if you've not made any changes at all to your Joomla installation that component will end up being com content with the view set to the featured articles so once we've done all that uh, we come down here to dispatch now dispatch um, does like the lion's share of the work. Okay, so it gets the component name from the parsed URL. Remember that we've done that up here in the route. Okay, uh, for so in a default, um, going to joom.dev, uh, passing no component, we know that it ends up being com content. So it has set the component to like com to uh, in our case, com content. It gets a copy of the document. Okay, and it gets a copy of the router and then um, it gets the components parameters if, if the component has parameters and it sets metadata in the document uh, if it's an HTML document which most cases it is unless you're sending a raw feed uh, then it gets the template uh, information for the document and it sets the document title and description and then it sets the content generator to Joomla and then it runs the component okay once the component runs it stores the output of the component to the document component buffer which uh, uh, then after that it loads us and triggers the system plugins so when all that's complete you see we reach the end of the um, method here and we'll be back into the execute um, method so it looks and says okay is this an instance of JDocument if it is we want to render the document well, when the document is rendered, um, it actually goes and loads the template, right, and calls document parse inside of that. And uh, the uh, parse method um, looks uh, at the template. It fills in the component. So the template has these little um, areas where it stores, says this is where the module is going to be, this is where the content is going to be, this is the debug area, and that sort of thing. So it, it parses all those JDoc include tags out of there and then starts backfilling um, the template with uh, with the um, with the component. 
and then after that it loads the system pub, uh, plugins and executes an on before render event and then it caches uh, the page if the caching is turned on so once we've done that it goes and looks and says okay do uh, oh, I'm sorry let me back up a little bit additionally it will um, when, we're, when we're rendering it will go through and see uh, where the modules are Okay, and if the modules are visible in the current menu link, it will go ahead and execute the module code and then backfill it into the module position of the uh, of the page. So once all the rendering is complete and all that information has been uh, gathered up, we look to see if we have uh, compression uh, turned on, and if we do, it will compress the document uh, using zip. And then finally, we get down here to this respond. This respond. Um, sets the document headers okay and then sends the headers and then uh, sends the document out and then we end up with the end result um, over here so I know that was um, kind of a short video but here's here's the thing to take away away from it uh, Joomla does a lot of work send information to the end user okay but you know having a bird's eye view of what Joomla does to perform this well, first, it gives you a little respect for the work that went into creating the platform, and it gives you a good understanding of, of you know, how your extensions get processed and rendered by the Joomla CMS or Joomla platform. Um, now, look, I, I realize that knowing this stuff um, isn't mandatory to write um, extensions, but it's good to know uh, where your extension fits into the framework. So, for writing a component, we know that the template is or the component is is executed uh, over here in the dispatch and it it builds that you know when dispatch runs that that's when your uh, component runs if you have written a module we learn that um, when we go to render it it loads the template and finds the location of all the module positions in the template and if uh, a module is is visible on that particular menu link it will run the module code okay so that's how your module get and then throughout um, uh, Joomla uh, uh, execution cycle well, we have these events like on after compre uh, compress uh, on after respond so we have opportunity uh, to run um, plugins so that's when the plugins uh, respond to these uh, events so uh, knowing that like I said I, I just think that uh, gives a uh, a, a better indication of you know what's run when it's run and granted we didn't go into um, uh, deep detail on how uh, the stuff happens uh, and, and the code because it would just uh, it would confuse newcomers um, but anyway if you have questions uh, please uh, comment in this video or come to uh, my personal website myheap.com and from the main page, if you go to Technology, Exploring Joomla 3.3, you'll see um, uh, what we've covered so far. But if you want to contact me, you can hit the Contact Us link. Send me an email, and I'll do my best to uh, answer your questions. And again, I apologize for my stuttering and stammering. I'm not a very good speaker. I'm learning this myself. I just want to pass this information out um, to, to folks who are, are with me in that boat trying to learn. If you have... Uh, uh, if you have found something that I've done that's uh, incorrect or something, uh, please let me know. Share, share, so we can get it out there to everybody else. So uh, this is uh, one of those walk in the weeds um, uh, videos. So the last one we done was the file system layout, and then of course this one's the execution cycle. Uh, in the next uh, uh, few videos, we're probably going to start talking about uh, uh, developing a module for Joomla. So hang with me, and uh, thanks for your support. Uh, if you've enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, uh, click like uh, if, if, it, if you found it beneficial or you think your friends would uh, um, find it beneficial share it with them uh, so other than that um, uh, have a blessed day